Hi everyone, welcome to the course on Introduction to Computer Networking. I'm Anand Sitaram, your instructor for this course. The book that we are going to follow for this course is Computer Networking, a top-down approach by Cruz and Loss. We are going to look at the sixth edition of this book. The slides that we are going to use for this course are also provided by the authors. Today being the first lecture for this course, I'm going to give you a high level idea about what the internet is. This is covered in chapter 1.1 of your book, which is what is the internet? The goal of today's lecture is to give you a feel and terminology of the internet and, the, and about computer networks. Later on, we will go into much more detail and depth about, about the different aspects of the internet. So today, what I'm going to talk to you about is what's the internet and what is the what is a computer protocol? Now, there are two main views of the internet. The first one is the nuts and bolts view. In the nuts and bolts view, we consider the internet as a machine, and we're going to look at the different aspects that make up the internet. The first thing in the internet are the millions of hosts or devices that are connected to it. For example, your, your laptop, your PC, the server, the phone that you have are all end hosts. They all connect to the internet. All these hosts are running different applications. Some popular applications that you might be using yourself are Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, etc. Now, these hosts are connected to the internet via communication links. Now, <clears throat> you might, in the PC in your home, might be connected to the internet using an uh, ethernet cable. For the phone or your laptop, you might be, uh, be connecting to the internet wirelessly. For example, your laptop or your phone might be connecting to the wireless router in your house wirelessly and from the wireless router might be connected to the internet using a wired link. The, there is another thing about the internet that we don't usually see. That those are packet switches and routers. Say you want to access a website, for example, google.com. The data from google.com has to be gotten to your computer from the servers of Google. What happens is it traverses the entire internet and it traverses a large number of packet switches and routers throughout the internet before the data comes to your end host, for example, your laptop. So the internet is actually a network of networks and there are many networks shown in this figure here. For example, there is a mobile network, there's a home network, there's an institution network. These are then co co connected to the ISPs. And home network can be considered to be the network at your home. For example, there are a few devices like your laptop, your computer, your phone, which are connected to the home router. This home router is then connected to the router of your ISP. An institution network is similar to an institution like CSUMB, which are where there are a few hundred devices that are connected <coughs> together and using communication links. And then this uh, network is connected to the regional ISP. We'll come into, go into details about uh, ISPs, both regional and global, later on during this course. So what you can see from this figure here is that the internet is a network of networks. There are multiple networks here. Actually, there are five networks, as you can see in this figure. The mobile network, the home network, the institution network, and the two ISPs. So all these network of networks together form the internet. Now, the other thing about the internet that we need to know is protocols. Now let's consider two individuals. The individuals, if they have to talk to each other, have to speak a common language. Protocols are also language that is used to communicate between the hosts or the different devices in the internet. For example, there, <coughs> the examples of protocols that are used are HTTP, TCP, IP, Skype, etc. We'll look into each of these protocols in detail later. Protocols are used for sending messages and receiving messages in the internet and communicating among the hosts. The other view of the internet that, that, that is used is actually the service view. The nuts and bolts view that we just studied gives <coughs> treats the internet as a, as a machine and what are the different components that make up the internet. This uh, view, the service view, is, is, is different from the nuts and bolts view in which users view the internet as a service. For example, when you are using the internet through your end host, you do not want to know as to how many routers are there in the internet. What you want is what kind of applications the internet can run on the internet. For example, you're interested in surfing the web, you might be interested in using voice over IP, 
such as Skype, you might be send, interested in sending emails. These are the applications that you want to run over the internet, and the uh, internet is a server <coughs> is a is a medium that gives you this kind of service. So this is a service level view. In this course of computer networks, we'll look at the nuts and bolts view and tell you how, what are the things that make up the internet and how the internet works. Before we get into a lot of details, here are a few fun applications that also run on the internet. You are using a lot of applications in your day-to-day -day life. For example, you're using Facebook, you're using Twitter, you're using WhatsApp, a few other applications. Now, there, the internet is evolving and sooner, sooner than later, I would like to say is most things on <coughs> are going to be connected to the internet. Currently, there's a refrigerator that can be connected to the internet. There's a toaster that's also um, available in the market that's connected to the internet. The toaster, for example, pr uh, prints out a picture of a cloud or the sun, depending on the weather in your area. So these are a few fun applications. So the internet is really huge and there are lots of applications that can that are being written for the internet before we end this introduction i would also like to briefly mention what a protocol is as i when i was talking about the nuts and bolts view we, we talked about the protocol as the language that is used between the end hosts between the hosts and the internet now when humans have to communicate with each other they use language as the as a protocol for example, if you want to communicate with your friend, you expect that both of you know the same language. Then, the, even though you want to know the same language, say you have to say it in a way that the other person understands. For example, if you want to know the time, you ask the person, what's the time? If you want to ask a question in class, you raise your hand and ask, what is the question? That is a human protocol. Similarly, machines also communicate with each other in a language that they all understand. So, so defining protocol more precisely, protocols define the format and order of messages sent and received among the different network entities and the actions that have to be taken on the transmission and reception of these messages. So that is a protocol. So let's look at a human analogy to understand how a protocol works. For example, there is Alice and Bob and Alice and Bob meet. Alice wants to know what's the time. So what she first says a hi, and Bob responds <clears throat> nicely by saying another hi. Then she asks Bob for the time, and then Bob replies that it's two o'clock. Similarly, when a, <clears throat> a computer wants to download a, a web page, say you want to go and access google.com, what your computer would do is it would first send a TCP connection request to the server hosting the web page for google.com. Once the request is received by the server, the server is going to send back a response. After that, the host sends what particular website it wants to visit. For example, the example given here is awl.com kuros-ross <coughs> and then the server is going to return that file. So this is an analogy of how the com of computers communicate over the internet. I'd like to end this first video, but I'd like to uh, uh, ask you to think about the other human protocols that are there. Later on, as we proceed through this course, you can map these different protocols to the protocols that we use in computer networks.